Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of AV Astronomy. Um, special video today, I wanted to take the time to reach out to all of you Maxitov Newtonian owners, or would be, could be Maxitov Newtonian owners. Today we're going to be talking about collimation and how to collimate this telescope. I know uh, there seems to be this idea that these are really difficult to collimate and a lot of people shy away from getting them because of maybe a fear of having to deal with collimation in general but also just because there's just not a ton of material online out there on these types of telescopes, which is a shame because they perform so, so well. They're really, really awesome. So with that, let's get started. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do here is visually inspect the corrector plate. And what you're looking for here are any major imperfections standing out on the corrector plate itself and or any gaps uh, that look unequal from the other areas of where this corrector plate is seated. May it be uneven or something like that. If that is the case, stop here and reach out to the manufacturer and send, you know, find out what needs to be done, but I'd highly recommend leaving that this part up to them uh, because this is shimmed in a way and each one is different. And if you change anything, the slightest thing, the distance on how that is shimmed, you could wind up with a telescope that you will never be able to collimate. So, if that is an issue, which it really shouldn't be, get with the manufacturer. Now, true collimation, though, begins with adjusting the secondary mirror, which sits right in here, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look down this focus to draw tube. All right, guys, so the first thing you're gonna do here is just take a peek down this focus to draw tube hole with your eye, just try to center it and um, make sure that the center dot on the primary mirror that you'll see in the reflection of the secondary here looks to be relatively centered, okay? The other thing you're gonna wanna look for is the actual angle of this secondary mirror in here. Does it appear to be flush and perpendicular to your eye or does it appear to have an offset? Is it off angle uh, pointing in any dire other direction other than directly at yourself, okay? So if there is an uh, offset there, then you're gonna wanna make an adjustment on the retainer ring up here. So let's take a look at that. So if your secondary mirror appears to be off angle, like I was mentioning earlier, what you're gonna wanna do is take off this cap, okay? You're then gonna, do, you'll see a flathead screw right in the middle there. Get a flathead screwdriver and tighten it. It just takes a couple of turns, you'll feel it. And what that does is it, it tightens these pins inside so that you now can um, release the retainer ring that holds this secondary assembly. There should be two uh, hex key locking sections here, one here and here. Loosen those up, then you can adjust by checking in the draw tube, adjust the secondary assembly and checking it and make sure that it is lining up and it appears to be circular, okay, and concentric. Shouldn't really have to do that. Again, this is something done out of the factory, but you know, as you, if you could pick this up used or uh, you know, whatever your situation may be, it's still something you want to check initially to make sure that secondary mirror is perpendicular to the line of sight and that focus to draw to. Now, once you've made that adjustment, and it's, these are small adjustments, you're going to lock that back down. So then put that retainer ring on because that holds it from moving again. Once you put that retainer ring back on, tighten it down with the hex keys and then release counterclockwise, unscrew this uh, flathead screw just a couple of turns to release those pins that secure it, okay? Now, now the easy part. <laughs> we're gonna use a couple tools. We're gonna use a laser collimator and we're gonna use a Cheshire or collimating eyepiece, okay? These really simplify the collimation process tremendously for really any kind of Newtonian or max Newtonian. We're gonna start with the collimating eyepiece. So let's take a look at that. So the first tool we're gonna use is this collimating eyepiece by SV Boney, Silver Boney, I don't know how you say it, but anyway, very inexpensive tool. You can pick it up online, just do a Google search on it, auction sites, online stores, you know, you know the deal. But anyway, uh, very inexpensive. I think I got this for like 15, 20 bucks, but it does the job very well. So what you're gonna do is we're gonna put this inside the focus to draw tube. So what you're gonna do is take a peek down this eyepiece here, and what you're looking for is concentric circles. If 
primary mirror, secondary mirror, and really you're looking at your eye appears in that donut in the center of that reflection off of the collimating eyepiece. So now we're going to make some minor adjustments to the collimation screws to get that looking a little more concentric. You can start with any screw, but you'll get a feel for which screw turns what and which direction as you make small adjustments looking into the eyepiece here. All right, that's all it took there, guys. My eye now appears in the center of the collimi collimation eyepiece and center of the center dot on the primary mirror, as well as the reflection of the secondary appears mostly concentric with the primary. So now that we've got that centered, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pop in the laser collimator and we're going to check the alignment of the primary and secondary one more time. All right, guys, this is the laser collimator I use. It's the SCA laser collimator by Hotec. There are a lot of collimator, laser collimators out there. I would say with collimation tools, laser collimators in particular, you get what you pay for. So if you try and get the cheapest thing online, um, I think you're going to be disappointed. There's a lot of slop and play when you put one of the cheaper ones into an eyepiece, hold a uh, nose piece <coughs> or a compression ring, whatever's holding it. And I mean, <laughs> if you're off on that from the get go, you're, you're just wasting your time. The other thing about this collimator is that there is a high level of quality control. So you know that the collimator itself is collimated and you don't have to worry about it not being aligned. But there's two, the Hotec and the Howie Gladders. They are the most expensive, but the Hotecs are still pretty reasonable. Um, I think they were, this one was like a $125. But it's, it's really not something you want to skimp on. And what makes sets, sets this one apart from the others besides the quality control is this compression ring system that compresses radially in the eyepiece holder into the nose piece. When you slide it in here, you, you don't tighten with a compression ring. You twist this down and make sure this is facing back to the primary mirror. You twist that down like so and it compresses evenly, radially, all the way around. So you know it's getting a straight angled path to the secondary and primary mirror, which is very important if you want to get accurate collimation. So once you've done that, you want to just wave your hand here in front of the tube just to make sure there's no laser beam coming out because you don't want to obviously look down and have a laser beam in your eye. So once you've done that, is look down the tube and check to see a couple things. Is the laser dot in the center dot, which in this case it's not, and I'm going to show you here in a second. and there's multiple reflections of this laser dot. If they're not all concentric and they're kind of scattered, then you know you've got some alignment issues. But let me show you what we've got going on here. All right, guys, you, you can see that laser dot right there just touching the left of the donut. So we want that centered, but at the same time, let me focus on some of these. I don't know if I can get it or not, but there's that laser dot there, and there's yet another beyond that you want to make sure those all converge okay, in the same line. If they appear off-centered in any way or separated, then you know that when you're focusing on a star, those, those sources of light aren't going to converge and you're not going to get a nice sharp image. Same goes for, for this. So what we're, the first thing we're going to do is get that laser dot centered, but then we're also going to check and make sure that there's no stray laser dots aside from that one that's centered there. So while looking down the tube, we're going to make some small adjustments here on the collimation screws, thumb screws here, to get that laser dot centered. And there we are. Just that minor adjustment is all it needed. It is now centered. And as I look down the tube, I can see that there is a slight, something slightly off angle because uh, not all three laser dots in each mirror. It's hard to explain, but you've got a reflection of the laser dots in 
the secondary, the primary, and then coming back through the, from the source. And you want all those to converge on each reflection, okay? So I know that some adjustment is going to need to be made. So now let's take a look at the primary mirror. Now, as you can see, looking down at the laser collimator here, the primary mirror is slightly off. So what I'm going to do now is make some adjustments on the back of these thumb screws right here. And before I make those adjustments, though, inside each thumb screw is a hex key lock. So you'll need to loosen those up first. And when you tighten them back down, you just, just slightly tighten them. Don't over tighten them. You can pinch the optics or, um, you know, mess up the collimation there a little bit. Just, just tighten them just enough just to make it snug, but not too tight. But you'll need to loosen those, and then you can make some small adjustments on the primary mirror. So let's do that. All right, guys, after making just two minor adjustments on the primary mirror, you can see now that that laser is dead on center in that donut ring. And if you look beyond it, I'll try and sharpen up that laser dot behind, it is also centered and it's, it's one source of light. Early on when I was collimating these, um, I would find myself getting the laser in the center of the donut, but I'd notice that the reflection of the laser behind it would be scattered, like there'd be multiple sources of, there'd be like three dots instead of that one you see right there. And that's a clear indicator that something's off. And if you find that to be the case, start from the beginning is with the Cheshire, the collimating eyepiece, check that again, make small adjustments, and then go back to the uh, primary mirror. But if you follow these steps like I just did, and this was, this was a you know, real life scenario. Um, I, you know, I hadn't collimated it in a while, and so I'm glad I checked it today because <laughs> it was a little off. All right, guys, so now that everything is centered, I've got a center dot reflection right there in the donut, and the laser dots beyond that are all concentric. You know you're, you're collimated. Now, as you can see, guys, I had to make a few adjustments on the scopes, uh, secondary and primary mirror, but very minor ones, mostly due to the fact that I have to set up a breakdown every time. I tote this thing out into the front of the driveway, if I'm shooting on the southward side of the sky or the backyard, either way, it's going to get jostled around a bit. And in those cases, it's going to, it, it could bump it out of alignment a little bit. But once you get it set up the first time and you get a feel for what does what on each end, it's, it's, it's a piece of cake. I mean, I can, I can have this thing collimated in less than five minutes. Um, so it's really not that big of a deal. Don't let it shy you away from experiencing the awesome performance that these scopes deliver. So with that being said, hope you enjoyed the video, got a lot out of it. I hope this video helps you in collimating your Max Dog Newtonian. Uh, I hope I explained it in a way that was easy. And I think you'll find that if you invest in a nice laser collimator and a Cheshire, that you can get great results. And ultimately, once you've even done this, you can always star test it. You can always star test it. Um, the scene conditions are usually poor, not so great here, so star testing would be something kind of I'd have to wait for. You can get like an artificial star, it's something, it's like a flashlight with holes in it, create stars, like a hundred bucks or something. But uh, I haven't found a need for that. Um, but just this method alone, I've been able to get collimation pretty darn close and tight. So that's given me great performance, both visually and for my imaging. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any other future videos regarding tutorials, imaging sessions, and gear. And thanks for watching another episode of AV Astronomy, and until next time, clear skies. Wait for the bird. Really? Come on.